Now the character generation process may not seem too impressive here. After all, there's not much going on in this little window. That's because the real action is happening elsewhere in the software. And to see what we've really done here, we need to close this window and go to the Characters tile. Here we can see a list of all the characters that were created by the character generator. And double-clicking on any one of them shows us that they've also been assigned their gender and what type of character they may be. In addition, we can also see the dramatic functional characteristics that they've been assigned as well. But perhaps the best way to see what the character generator has done is to go to the Build Characters area. Here we can see that not only have the characters been given icons and names and genders, but they've also been assigned dramatic elements as well, dramatic functions. They've been given character motivations, purposes, methodologies, and means of evaluation. They've become four-dimensional characters, more like real people. And in addition to that, by clicking on any character, you can see how they relate to the other characters in the same family of traits. In effect, by looking at this side chart here, you can determine how these characters will relate to one another in the story. So even though it's not a direct function of the character generator, by going to the Build Characters window, you can see the generator has actually picked out character relationships as well. Once again, all of the features in this area are completely covered in the character demonstration elsewhere in this program. But you've now seen how brainstorming works for both creating a story structure and generating characters.